Welcome to the Alternative Hair Alchemist podcast. Now, whether you're one of the hundreds of thousands of women experiencing hair loss for any number of reasons, or if you're curious and want to check out what alternative hair is all about, you are in the right place. Hi, I'm Deborah. I am a certified alternative hair specialist, educator, and the co-creator of a -a one-of-a-kind, shame-free, stigma-free alternative hair boutique called Very Best Little Hair House, and that's where the magic happens. That's where I help women and men like you find the alternative hair that brings their inner beauty out. We take over where genetics or Mother Nature drop the ball and help you find and wear the alternative hair that makes you feel vibrant. I've made it my business to discover all there is to know about good wigs and toppers, and I love to talk about them. It's not just hair. It's so much more than that. This is about feeling complete, and if alternative hair is the way for you to do that, I got you covered. Yeah, it sucks when you see your scalp shining through your hair, but you know what? There is joy in finding the right alternative hair, trust me. It can be overwhelming at first. I mean, where do you start? Wig? Topper? Oh my God, will somebody know? What if my wig falls off? First of all, take a deep breath, I got you covered. This podcast addresses all things alternative hair. It's not always as easy as just finding a wig and putting it on, so I'm going to give you a tell-it-like-it-is viewpoint from what I see firsthand. I've been through it all. Stress hair loss, alopecia, chemo. So I started my own journey about 20 years ago, and at that time I had nobody to talk to or get advice from, so I am here for you. And I can tell you this, even on my best natural hair day, I never looked or felt as confident as I do in my alternative hair. And now after five years of helping people in my shop get over that fear and get out there, I am bringing this to you to inspire, empower, and educate you. It's simple. When you look good, you feel even better. And if alternative hair is part of that confidence, Who cares if you grew it or if you bought it? Forget your grandma's wig and prepare to look red carpet gorgeous. Time to end this shame and stigma. Life is too short not to love who you are, and I want you to get excited about the possibilities. So grab your headphones, feel the love I am sending your way, and let's do this. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Alternative Hair Alchemist. Now in this week's episode, I want to talk about partners in wigs. When do you tell them? What do you do? I'm going to share how I've handled it and give you some approaches because this has come up a couple times in the store, which by the way, very best little hair house. If this is the first time you're listening, check out our website. It's a really cool little place. It came about because I have hair loss and wear alternative hair myself. And I wanted to create a cool, shame-free zone where you can find the best, where the help knows what they're talking about. And to make you feel comfortable when shopping for alternative hair. And I love what I do. It is so rewarding. I was a registered nurse for almost 35 years, and I can tell you I have the best days of my life at the shop because alternative hair can make a difference. And that is where the alchemy part comes in. I have, and so does Chris, a real talent for helping find the right hair piece. And not just that, empowering you with a little knowledge on how to wear it with confidence, how to take care of it, and all that good stuff. So when we discuss partners and wigs, It's going to bring up some of the very, very unnecessary shame and stigma that has to do with hair loss. So anytime you're discussing hair loss or thinking about hair loss, I mean, first of all, there is a lot of unnecessary shame that goes along with hair loss that I see. I've been able to work through it, especially now with the shop, because I will take my wig off and share how I shave my head now. 
alopecia areata, which is not something I did not have the confidence to do until we opened the shop, but that's a whole nother subject in itself. So I'm trying to think of how it first came up. I think Chris works right alongside me in the shop. And when I was getting wigs or something out of the back room, I think either the client or the visitor said to him, like, did you know she wears a wig? And I was kind of flabbergasted that actually that that would occur. But I guess it's really more common than I thought. A couple people have asked me when the right time is. So we're going to talk about some of those options and some advice behind it. You know, how you handle it is totally up to you. But first of all, I have to say, if you can't be honest in your relationship, it's probably not the right one. And you might not want to hear that, but I'm at the point in my life, and I want you to get in the point of your life, that you are not willing to accept something less than total and complete love. Okay, so... um, I understand if it's a subject you don't want to approach, but nonetheless, it's going to come up sooner or later. So, you know, let's discuss some of the ways you could possibly handle it. Now, if you're early dating, like even the online thing and just sending pictures and haven't met in person, I would say um, send them more pictures than not. I mean, send them with your wig, without your wig. You know, there's a million ways you can work up to it. But bottom line, if it's just an online romance, why tell them at all? You know, I mean, it's best to get to know somebody. And I only say that not because you shouldn't tell them, but because there are a lot of people that just aren't up to speed with it. And why subject yourself to somebody's reaction if it's not going to be an issue anyway? So now if you're casually dating, again, that is up to you. I would hope that you could find a level of comfort with this person that you could approach even just the subject. Uh, Another way, as you're dating along a little more, you could work it in like, the, you know I have a wig, right? Or that I wear a wig. And when you ask it in that way, I'll tell you because I've had this reaction a couple of times along my life. Even when people do not care that you wear a wig, like it's a non-issue. When they find out it's a wig and they didn't know it was a wig, I don't know how to explain the reaction. It's almost like they feel that they were fooled or they become embarrassed that it was undetectable. And I just mentioned that because it took me a long time to figure out that that's what that reaction was about. So some people feel it's their thing if they feel that they were fooled and have a hard time with it. But it's also quite a compliment if they didn't know it was a wig. So, you know, you're at least doing something right. And now if you're married, it goes without saying it should be a non-issue. But you know what? The shame of it is I know it is an issue for some women because another wig shop owner that I talked to has clients that get a new human hair wig every month because they sleep in it or from what I understand and I didn't talk to the person personally they were under the impression that the husband didn't know and I have to say at that I kind of wonder if there's some underlying denial that somebody else doesn't know but anyway my point is is that if you're taking it to that extent if you're sleeping in it or whatever you may need to look at getting more accepting of yourself and I know it's easy for me to say but when you think about hair loss this way or anything that you don't like about yourself first of all you didn't do it on purpose correct I mean nobody does anything to deserve hair loss so why are you blaming yourself I came to this realization myself maybe six, seven years ago, shortly before I decided to open the store. But it hit me one day. It's like, why am I feeling bad about myself? I didn't do anything to do this. And from there, I was able to process it to where it's just a thing. It wasn't always that easy. I have alopecia areata. It will fall out at times like in huge clumps so along the way after I opened the shop other people that shave their heads gave me the courage to do that 
And I'll tell you, once I've done that, I've never looked back. It involves you coming to the realization that you're probably going to be wearing a wig anyway. So it's just easier to care for and to deal with. It makes a lot of wigs really easy to wear. The only thing I'll tell you right now, it's cold when you get out of bed at night. So make sure that you have your headwear or whatever. I like the Christine headwear. Keep that handy because it does get cold. But... Your partner should love you no matter what. And we call it date night here, or Chris does when he shaves my head. And I shave my head for more than one reason now, but one of the reasons is is because I understand when women come to the shop, they are feeling vulnerable when they take their wig off. So I take mine off sometimes, first of all, to show people how I use wig tape as the only thing that I help brace my wigs with, but that, again, is another episode. But... The response has been really quite pleasant. People are like, oh, you look cute like that. I would just wear it if I looked like that. And you know what? Gets right back to the same thing. Like, I appreciate the compliment, but I enjoy my wig, okay? I love them. So I look forward to wearing them. And you know what? That's okay, too. Just as okay as if you shave your head and you don't want to wear a wig. It's all good. I personally think it's fun to try every wig out there. And I do it in the name of the shop sometimes because, like, I like to make sure I know what I'm talking about. So, you know, I'm always keeping up on what's coming out. And some women like purses. I like wigs. But anyway, getting back to being married or how partners handle it when you're married. We see the greatest couples in our shop for the most part. For the most part, and also I see the other situation too. I have men with hair hair loss that have very supportive wives, but with the women with hair loss, the men are generally even more supportive. I've had husbands learn how to help check if the hairline or the lace front is laying. Men will just jump right in there to help or to learn. It's really pretty amazing. And sometimes they are the one that is encouraging them to feel okay enough about spending some money on yourself, which every time I mention that, I don't want to get into a debate about how many wigs or what the price should be. But the general concept of spending on oneself as for most women is kind of tough. So it's always nice to see a supportive partner, and hopefully you will have one of your own. I know I do. In fact, look what happened. I liked Wig so much, he jumped in. Then I noticed he's pretty good at it. You kind of develop this intuition as you go, and I see it working with him. So I always tell people when they come in the shop, I introduce him and say he's just about as good at it as I am, except I'm the only one that wears them. And I think that sometimes men that wear hair pieces have just as hard a time, if not even more of a hard time, thinking about letting their partner know because it really is not as acceptable for men to wear hair pieces as it is for women. Um, We have a debate about that with me and Chris. I think a lot more men would be open to wigs if it was a little bit more acceptable. So, you know, maybe, and I know that we have a lot of our followers on YouTube are men that wear hair pieces and wigs, and I love that because embracing alternative hair is a movement. I mean, I see it coming. I want you to feel confident in alternative hair. Like I said, it can change your life. And if your hair loss is making you feel bad or if you feel sh- any type of shame of that at all, you know, you can change your belief. When you start to believe something about yourself, it's because it's a thought that you keep thinking. And you know what? You can stop it. And that's the first step to getting okay or with being able to forgive yourself and you know I was thinking about this sometimes with hair loss you can go through the same stages of grief as the Kubler-Ross's death and dying I may have mentioned that before but although in some aspects it's just hair it's also a very huge thing 
So if the thought comes into your mind that you're feeling less because your hair is thinning or whatever, first of all, like I said, stop it. But just recognizing that that's an irrational thought is the first step to changing it. Okay, so when the thought occurs to you, remind yourself this is beyond your control. Remind yourself that you are beautiful because you are. And if you knew how much love was around you, you would be amazed. And don't think like that about yourself. And the more I can help you think about changing it, the more I'm going to do that. So back to my own experience, my own alternative hair journey and partners. I can say that I have been doing this for such a long time that it's spanned three partners. So I will talk about each of those. Okay, in 2003, when I first uh, started wearing wigs because of the brain surgery, uh, my partner at that time was okay with it. In fact, somewhat encouraging. But my in-laws, my entire family at that time was not. Like as soon as the surgeries were over, it was really... I mean, they made me feel bad about wanting to wear a wig, and I'll tell you, you know, kind of shamed me out of it. And so I wish I would have done things differently back then, but there are partners that can also maybe make you feel that you shouldn't wear a wig. A couple times in the shop, I have seen partners that feel a little threatened when the mate gets a wig that makes them look really good. I hear them say things like, well, it doesn't look like your old hair. I don't know why they say that because, again, irrational. It's not your old hair. So that's something I always look for the response of, it looks great. I'm not a little used to it, but, you know, something like that. But if you have a partner that doesn't like it, you know what? You do you. I can't stress that enough. If you wear the wig and act like it's not a thing, then it doesn't have to be one. And I guess no episode about partners and wigs would be complete if I didn't address the sex thing. Two ways, basically, that you can handle it. Take it off and leave it at the bedside or fasten it down. There are wig grips, cap grips. I'm a fan of Walker blue tape, but, you know, just have fun with it, whatever works for you. So anyway, I think I've said about everything on that subject good enough for one episode. I wish you the best relationship. When you have honesty, when you're not afraid of telling your partner anything because you're both okay with each other, that's where true intimacy comes in. And it can be very, very freeing. One way to look at it, when you're wearing alternative hair, it's no different from wearing contact lenses or eyelash extensions, what have you. So I guess that's it for this week's episode. Remember to try not to worry what other people think. Life is short. Wear that wig. Until next week, bye-bye. If you loved this episode and want to connect with me, please go to my website and drop me an email, verybestlittlehairhouse.com, so we can get in touch. And until next time, remember that you are beautiful, perfect, and loved just the way you are.